Hello and welcome to Stock Talk, Self Trade's regular investment programme. This edition looks at CFDs and spread betting. And coming up, we'll be talking to Joshua Raymond, market strategist at City Index, asking the public their opinions on CFDs and handing over to the wise monkeys to answer your investment questions. CFDs and spread bets are derivatives which offer access to a wide range of instruments including individual shares from across the globe, indices, currencies and commodities. They are both leveraged products. This means that investors can place trades by depositing a small percentage of the full value of the trade. This is known as margin and after the initial deposit, the level of margin required fluctuates in line with the value of your portfolio. Such leverage magnifies gains but also means that if the underlying moves against the investor, the broker will demand more margin payments. They are contingent liability instruments, meaning you can lose more than you invest. However, the product also tends to include stop loss mechanisms, which allow you to manage your risk. CFDs and spread betting have become increasingly popular over recent years. This reflects the flexible nature of the product. Used to hedge equity portfolios, extract cash, or reduce tax liability, there are clearly a number of benefits. Okay, I'm joined by Joshua Raymond from City Index, and we're going to talk about CFDs and spread betting. Joshua, why have CFDs and spread betting become so popular? I think one of the most important aspects and, and, and has grown um, as the industry has grown, in fact, is the amount of markets that are available. You can trade literally thousands of markets all across the world, and that gives you exposure to these types of markets you wouldn't norm- normally get from your typical sort of share dealer. So I can see that's the, one of the main reasons why spread betting and CFDs has grown in popularity, and, and particularly why we expect it to grow in popularity as the years go on. And what would you say are the main benefits? Uh, well, one main benefit is, is the fact that they're both leveraged. So effectively, you're saving yourself a number of your initial sort of cash outlay than you would have to do with a regular sort of share dealing. So therefore, if you were going to buy, say, £5,000 worth of Vodafone shares, with a spread better or a CFD, it's leveraged, say, as, as let's say 10%, for instance. And therefore, to trade that £5,000, you only actually have to give in your account uh, £500. There are a number of uh, tax advantages as well. So for instance, both products are free from stamp duty. However, um, spread betting, all profits are free from capital gains tax as well. So you're saving yourself an initial 18% on what you would normally have to pay at the end of the tax year on that side of things. And finally, you can go long and short. So basically, it gives you an, a, a lot of flexibility in terms of how you can trade the markets by profiting from it going up as just as much as it going down. And let, let's be clear then, so, so what are the main differences between the two products? The, the one key difference is that capital gains tax factor. The fact that profits are free from capital gains tax and spread betting, but they're not in, in, in CFDs. However, because you do pay capital gains tax in CFDs, you can use it to offset against any losses made. And therefore, a lot of people use CFDs to hedge a physical share portfolio because it can be quite economical that way. And how best should, say, a beginner go about uh, approaching these products? Well, first and foremost, understand the products. Because of that leverage, there is a a degree of risk involved in the actual trade. So 100% understand how the product works, understand what the maximum benefits are, but also the maximum risks. And secondly, always have a trading strategy. We always recommend never to have a client sort of delve in at the deep end with a trade just because they think a stock's going to go up or down, for instance. Always have a trading strategy. Think about your maximum profits that you're looking to take and also the maximum losses. And use the risk management tools that Self Trade and City Index give their clients to help manage that side of it. And you've talked about the risk there, but can, can we be clear on what the risks are and how an investor might go about managing them? Okay, well the risks are, are purely down to leverage, because obviously, uh, returning to that previous example of the £5,000 trade on Vodafone, um, your risk is still £5,000, even though because the leverage has given you the benefit that you actually only have to give an initial cash outlay of say 10% of that. So understanding what your true exposure is is half the battle. In effect, because it is leveraged, your, ma- your risks are magnifying just as much as your return. The remaining side of the battle is using some of the trading tools that we give clients, like stop losses for instance, and that helps to manage their risks. So it's basically a way of a client saying, well look, if I trade stock A and it goes down as low as say 100 pence, then through our automated uh, uh, trading tools, the the system will automatically stop them out to stop them from uh, incurring any further losses, and that's basically what a stop loss is for. And what's on the cards for both CFDs and spread betting uh, in the future? It's got to be in lines of, of techno- technological advancements. I mean, if you look at the way the industry has grown, and particularly in the last sort of five or six years, it's all been in a case of online platforms and the amount of trading tools that, that yeah, uh, companies like Self Trade and like City Index give to their clients to help manage their positions. And that is firmly the main line where I see the industry growing, particularly over the next couple of years.
And there's one final question that everyone in the office wanted to know, and that is, is it a great responsibility being the city's hunkiest man? <laughs> so uh, someone should have warned me that you're going to ask that, because I'm going to turn bright red. Um, <laughs> it's a yeah, it's a it's, it's, a, it's a big it's a big uh, yeah, so it's a big uh, a big big throne to carry. I don't know whether I'll be able to carry it on next year or not. I'll, and I'll and you, you weren't in the list last year. So I was not. No, I'm a newcomer. I'm a complete newcomer. Yeah, so a, a good surprise, a welcome <laughs> surprise, though. Joshua, thank you very much. Thanks. Yes, I invest um, in CFDs and I spread bet quite regularly. Well, I haven't invested in spread bets because I feel it's a, it's a bit like gambling. Well, I guess in many cases there's no limit to how much you can lose, so it's extremely dangerous. So whatever you do, bet or risk, then you have to keep that in mind. It does require a significant amount of time to understand what you're doing. Um, and you know a certain attitude to risk. Well, the risks are inherent anyway. Whether you're buying bond spread betting or share spread betting, you've got the risk anyway. I would do spread betting, just because it's what I've always done. It's a lot easier. CFDs are a little bit more complicated, and you have to pay certain fees to come in and out. CFDs less so. I think the other point about CFDs is, relates to how you can access them in, in the market. Um, I'd be more inclined to invest in a spread bet, um, just from familiarity, uh, and it's a tax efficient way of making money. I would consider CFDs, but again, it depends upon where in the cycle we are. I'm here today with Dave and Steven, and we're here to discuss a little bit about CFDs and spread betting, and just learn a little bit more about it. So, I have a question for you, gentlemen. Okay, I already see that he's not very into it. You haven't heard the question yet. Oh, sorry, yes. I just yet. heard the word spread betting, yeah. How, well, I see his face, so that makes my question rather apt. How disciplined should one be when investing in these types of instruments? I think very disciplined. I think it's very important to be, to be disciplined. Um, these are high-risk instruments, and, and you can end up you know, losing quite a lot of money on them. So um, it's important to make use of, of, of stop losses to be very clear about your attitude to risk and, uh, and your, your investment objectives about using these things in the first place. And then be disciplined yourself, so make sure you use stop losses and, uh, that, that are made available. Um, make sure that you, you cut your losses if, if you, you realise that you've made the, the, the wrong decision. And make sure you, you take profits where necessary and, um, you know, and, and don't be too greedy. I, oh, I agree with all of what Stephen says, and I mean, you know, um, and I, I'm, I, I don't use CFDs, but I've listed, used listed CFDs before, which is a kind of slight mutant variation of. Um, uh, and I don't, I don't know what's going to happen in the, in the, in the short term, you know. Um, I can take some guesses about what will happen in the medium to long term based on the economy and all that kind of stuff, but I don't know what's going to happen in the short term. And, therefore, and that is what spread betting and CFDs are about. You have to take a view of what's going to happen in the next one month, one week, three months, four months, six months, because that's the name of the game, isn't it? And I don't know is the answer. Okay, so... I think in conclusion, if you're not Uri Geller, please be sure to use stop losses as well as uh, mitigate your risk as carefully as you can. Thank you so much. Well, that's it for this edition of Stock Talk. If you have any comments or suggestions, email me at research at selftrade.co.uk. Thank you for watching. <laughs>